Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters and this is my video blog for today Audhu billahi minash shaitani rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Brothers and sisters I'd like to take a moment and reply to one of the YouTubers on YouTube by the name was a young Muslim sister named her screen name is Ana Muslima 2009 Ana Muslima 2009 had put a blog on. She's a really young sister. She seems like she just got out of high school. And the situation was is she was approached by Muslim brothers on the street who she felt that they were trying to holler, basically. you know. Um, I don't know the context of the situation, but I thought it would be good for me to break open some adab in approaching Muslim sisters. Well, in her story, she said something about the brother pulling over a taxi cab and, uh, you know, hollering at her like, you know, sister, you know, how you doing? You know, I'm going to give you my information and, you know, talk. You know, he was real trying to be smooth, like he was hollering to her. I don't know what the context was, but I'll go ahead and just lay in a little information if I can. Brothers, you don't want to do things like this. And I'll give you a reason why. In a few of my blogs, you know, I talked about being an example. And Umar Ibn Kitab, radiallahu an, said every action is by an intention. Or the, the intention precedes the action is a better way of expressing it. So if you have the intention in your mind to do something that may lead to a negative action, it will show in the way that you do things. Very simple. So if you have a lustful look at a woman, like her or whatever it may be, and you want to approach that woman, that is going to come out of your heart. But if you have an intention truly to greet your sister and to respect your sister, then that will come out in your approach. And sisters are more emotional creatures. They don't like it when we say that. Some are more, some emotional, some are not emotional. There are some sisters that I will admit that are not very emotional. But I will say that they are keen to the approaches and the advances of men, just like we are when it comes to women. So you want to make sure that your adab is clean. Take it from me, brothers. Anybody needs to let you know I have a story. I'm a brother who's been single for six years and looking for a wife. You're right. There's brothers out there that need to get married. That is a problem that we are dealing with in the Ummah. There are a lot of situations where people are not finding wives and they need wives. They need wives right away. Right away. You know, immediately. <laughs> but unfortunately, there's no network that brothers can operate that, are, that would give a excellent turnover rate and giving brothers marriage unions, as well as sisters, marriage unions. We don't have an organization that is nationwide that really works to get brothers and sisters married. But it's no excuse. We still have to do better. When you see your Muslim sister on the street, let me break it down how it works. Number one, you give her salams. You must give her this type of salams that, let her, that lets her know that you're not out to get at her. That you're out to protect her. So your salamu alaikum should be right on the money. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sister. Stop right there. Number one, you don't know if the sister's married. Number two, you don't know her wali. Number three, you don't know whether or not she feels comfortable with your advancement past the assalamu alaikum. But in my security video, I'd like to invite people to watch that and understand that you must keep still an awareness. When you greet your sister, you keep an awareness to know where she's at because she may need you. The fact that you give her salams lets her know that you're on her side and lets her know that she can come to you for protection because you may not be representing Islam with a long beard or a kufi. 
Your greeting of assalamu alaikum means if something breaks out in this mall, sister, I got your back. If something breaks out on this street, sister, a riot, I got your back. And at that point, you leave it alone. See, we as Muslim brothers don't speak game. I'm going to say that again for a lot of people that didn't understand what I meant. We as Muslim brothers don't speak game. See, we as Muslim brothers, we don't speak game. We get married. We don't date. We get married. We don't play. We're not players. We get married. We get married and we take our soldiers on as a responsibility that's divinely given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We use that responsibility and we treat our women with respect. Every sister we look at as our sister. Every sister we look at as our mothers. Because we must understand that there is a wali. For if he knew what you was doing to the sister, if it was disrespectful, he'd probably have more than a few words for you. He might want to knuckle up with you. So brothers, I want to warn you to be careful. Now there was a situation where the sister said it was an African brother. And I will give, you know, a little breakdown that the African brother may not have known that the sister uh, felt uncomfortable. Maybe this is something that he does in his country. I'd like to comment on that for a moment and say that this is how Islam has evolved from the early 70s. In the 70s, we had what was called the Islamic movement. Our sisters did not step out their homes without an escort. Our sisters had security. These type of systems we need to learn from our past and enact these systems so that we can have our sisters in situations where they can not feel vulnerable. If this brother understood or if he's watching this video, he needs to know that we don't get down like that in America. That's not how we do it. If a brother stopped and hollered at my sister who was walking down the street in his taxi cab and was spitting extended game to it, no, <laughs> bro, we don't get down like that in America. Us Muslims don't get down like that. We don't. We don't allow nobody to holler at our sisters. That's the type of school of thought that I come from, which is in the hood, where we try to protect our women. The other situations, Allahu Allah. Allah gives us the burden of protection, and we have to do it. Let me conclude, brothers and sisters. As this, I have uh, five sisters, so this hits me right at the core of the heart. And you know, there have been situations where I haven't been able to protect my younger sisters, my own younger blood sisters. There's been situations where I haven't been able to protect sisters that I grew up in the community with. But I will be honest with you, brothers and sisters, and particularly to the brothers, when you need an example, I'm gonna steal from my brother Anas. He has a phrase that says, be like Muhammad. Be like the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when you approach your Muslim sister in need. Truly, this is a subject matter which will cause controversy. And I will be honest with you, I appreciate all the response that I've gotten from my viewers. May Allah bless every one of the viewers in the audience. I had to respond to this particular subject because I wanted to let the sister know and other sisters in her situation that many brothers are new to the religion Many brothers don't have the fear of Allah. And many brothers, um, some are perpetrating. Some are not really Muslims. So I would want a sister to have her guard up. But at the same time, I want this to be highlighted. That we have a severe issue. That we need to have more security and protection for our Muslim sisters. This is your brother, Umar Abdul Rahim. Please, brothers and sisters, forgive me for any of my errors. Inshallah, may Allah... Bless every single one of you, brothers and sisters in the audience, and make sure that we protect one another and love one another for the sake of Allah. Inshallah. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.